Good morning boys and girls, it's Sunday again and it's lovely to be back chatting to you. Last week if you remember we were thinking about David the shepherd boy who God had chosen to be the next king of Israel and while his father and his brothers had looked at him and didn't think he was fit to be a king, God looked at him and seen him to be someone who was important but more importantly seen him fit to be the next king. The Bible tells us that while humans look at the outward appearance, they judge us for how we, we look, how we speak, how we act, that God looks at our hearts. God cares about the condition of our hearts. This morning we're going to continue to think about David, the shepherd boy, and we're going to think about how God can use unlikely people to bring about his plan. David had spent his days in the fields looking after sheep. His job was to care for the sheep and to protect them. He was just a young boy. Unlike his older brothers, who were soldiers and they were used to going to battle. And so one day David's father sends him down to check on his older brothers and he says to them to David to take a packed lunch for them and then to come back and report how they're getting on. But as David's there and um, this Philistine champion comes forward, um, his name's Goliath and he's looking for someone to face him in battle. Goliath was an absolute giant of a man. He was about nine foot tall. He came armed in armor from head to toe and um, that weighed in at about 50 kilograms. He carried a javelin with him, and um, he had a shield bearer walking in front of him. This man meant business. He was used to going to battle. And each day Goliath would come out to the battle line and he would shout at God's people, send me your very best soldier to come out and fight me. But everyone was absolutely terrified. No one was willing to go. But for 40 days, Goliath kept on going. Choose a man and let him fight me. Send me your best soldier, send me someone to fight me but no one was brave enough to go everyone was utterly terrified of the size of this man but that was until David heard his cry remember David's just a young man he's small he doesn't look that strong he's used to to caring for sheep not going to battle but when David heard this defiant cry he said I'll go I'll do it I'll go and fight this champion your servant will go and will fight him the king as good as laughed at David and said, don't be daft, you can't fight him. You're only a boy. This guy's been a warrior all his life. You wouldn't stand a chance. But David replied to the king and said, I've been looking after sheep all my days. My whole life I've been caring for my sheep and protecting them. When a lion or bear has come to harm them, I've, I've fought them, I've killed them with my bare hands. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the bear will surely rescue me from the hand of this Philistine champion. David was so sure of God's strength and God's power and God's might. He trusted completely that God would be with him, that God would go before him, that God would protect him. David knew that God was on his side. And so the king agrees and says, fair enough, you go. And as you go, the Lord be with you. But first, let me give you some armor to wear. And so the king brings David in and he dresses him in his armor and then he gives him a sword and tells David to take a walk but David couldn't move it was so heavy it was weighing him down he wasn't used to carrying this kind of weight David refused to wear the armor instead he said you know what I'll take with me a sling and five smooth stones and so as he takes with him his sling and five stones he, he goes out to face Goliath this Philistine champion this absolute giant of a man Goliath thought this was some kind of a joke. He began to laugh thinking, David's not going to stand a chance. He's an easy opponent. But little did, did Goliath know that God was on David's side. And so David says to Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. The Lord will deliver you into my hands. I'll strike you down. I'll cut off your head. Then the world will know that there is a God and that the Lord saves. The battle belongs to the Lord. David was so sure that God was with him and that God was going to be victorious in all of this. And so as David and Goliath stand up face to face preparing for battle, Goliath advances towards him. But as he comes towards him, David takes out a stone. He puts it in a sling and he slung it around his head. And as the stone whistled through the air, it hit David right on the forehead. He stumbled to the left and then to the right and crashed to the ground. This giant of a man fell down dead. David, just a boy, just a shepherd boy, the unlikely of all people to go out and fight a champion. He was doubted by everyone else, yet he was chosen by God. He had defeated this 
giant. He had defeated the champion. You see, he had trusted completely that God was with him. His faith in God was rock solid. Nothing could sway him from trusting in God. God was with him on his side and protecting him. David was the hero of this story, the unlikely, the unimportant shepherd boy that God chose to use. He was the hero because he went out and he fought the giant that was before him. But this story points us towards an even greater hero, an even greater hero that defeated an even bigger giant. That hero was Jesus and that giant was sin. Sin is just a tiny word, but it has a giant impact on our lives. Sin is the giant that keeps us away from God. It stops us from having a relationship with God. Jesus defeated sin once for all. Not with a stone, not with a sword, but on the cross. Jesus defeated sin because he loves us so much. He loves us so much that he wanted to forgive us and wanted us to be able to have that relationship with God. So this week, I want you to remember this story for me. Remember that God can use unlikely people, just like you, just like me, just like David, to bring about his plans. But in all of that, we've got to trust that God is with us. We've got to trust that God is on our side. And when God's on our side, we are always victorious. So I hope you have a wonderful week. It's been great chatting to you and I can't wait to chat to you again next week.